Good morning. Today is December 2nd, 2006. We're meeting today with Irene Dubois, her main name, Hansen, at her daughter's home in Wellington, Colorado. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer for the Northern Colorado Veterans Oral History Program. Welcome, Mrs. Hansen. Hello. Thank you very much for participating in this project. My pleasure. Let's start out, if we can, if you can give us a little background about yourself, uh, where you're and when you were born. I was born in 1921 in Maconia, New Hampshire. I was raised in uh, New Hampshire, and I went in the service from New Hampshire. But when I came back, I graduated to Maine okay. and married and raised my family there. Can you tell us a little bit about your uh, uh, parents and how many siblings you had? I had three brothers only, and they they were all dead. Okay. Um, two of them were veterans, and uh, the the, uh, the oldest one had a handicap, so he wasn't in the service. Okay. And um, what else? All right. Uh, well, can you tell us a little bit about what you were doing prior to entering the service? Well, I was in training. See, um, when I trained, uh, we had a choice of um, doing on-the-job training. It was. Uh, three-year diploma school. They did that in those days. Now I don't think they even have them anymore. But um, Somewhat like a, like a technical college? Or? Oh, no, I worked in the hospital. It was on-the-job training is what it was. Uh, we worked 12 hours a day. Had, we had to, uh, let's see, we, pay, we were paid $50 a, a month. But if we broke anything, they came out of that $50. But um, we were on the job. We'd go to work 7 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock at night. But we would leave the floors to go to school to take the classes. And the only night off we had was one uh, 7 to 11, one night a week. <laughs> that was the training back in the 1920s. And uh, it wasn't until I came back up to, uh, to Maine that we got on eight-hour shifts. It was really funny. but. Um, I went in March because... Uh, this, March, do you remember March of what year? Oh, 1940, okay. 1940. Because uh, having uh, the students do a lot of the work, they needed uh, to make sure they had students. And therefore, uh, they would uh, take them in September and take them in March. Well, in September, I was only 17. I couldn't go in. So I had to wait till March to go in. And so I was in training from March 1940 to March 1943. And after I graduated, I did stay in Laconia uh, uh, for a little while. Then I went down to Florida because my brother uh, was in the Marine Corps down in Florida. So I went down to Jacksonville. But I had joined the student reserves. I had been, I, on December 7th, I was... The re when we heard about the attack was um, we ha we used to have it was a Sunday morning and we used to have a, a very short ceremony uh, we'd sing hymns or something and I remember that day as well as if it were yesterday you know and I stood and um, we we had been collected in, in the living room there of the nurse of the uh, residence it was and um, we had our little program and then. When we heard about that, boy, that was really something. And then uh, they started a student reserve, which I joined immediately, because I had no doubts whatsoever. It was, I had no doubts whatsoever that I would join, because um, I'm not married, no kids, and I knew they, and you know, uh, patriotism in those days was a little bit different than it is now. But anyway, there was absolutely no thought in my mind that I would ever not go. So I did go down to spend some time with my brother because he was leaving for the South Pacific, down in Florida. And when I came back, I joined uh, the Army on the 3rd of no November, 1943. And on the 23rd of December, I'm on the high seas for England. What? They, well, they didn't get, have to give us basic training, you know. Can, can I uh, back up a little yeah. bit and ask uh, how you chose to get into nursing? Was it an interest or was there just uh, very just, few? Uh, you, well, from high school, it was just seemed that I wanted to be a nurse. Uh -huh. I, I don't think there was any particular reason. Um, I just wanted to be a nurse. Yeah. 
And what were your uh, parents' thoughts about you uh, joining the service? Oh, uh, they were very proud of me. And they, of course, are very proud of my brother also. And um, I wrote to them. They used to write to me. I still have letters now that I come across the letters from them. They did, of course. But um, they, I think they felt the same as I did, that they needed nurses and I had to go. That's what they did with my brother. He was younger than I was, but... And uh, I won't say this, I guess I better not, but <laughs> that poor guy. He had to have his tonsils out. And he, I was working when he had his tonsils out. I, I can't tell you any more than that, can I? <laughs> it's your take, but you can put on whatever you'd like. I never heard this story. They but... wouldn't take anybody in the Marines unless they'd been circumcised. Well, in those days, <laughs> in those days, they didn't circumcise all children. <laughs> And this poor guy, he wants to go in the Marines. <laughs> he wants to go in the Marines. And so he has it done both at the same time. Well, I guess you know Uncle Armin was... <laughs> he was hurting. He was hurting. Yeah. I never told you that? No. <laughs> that funny. Oh, that poor kid. But he wanted to go in the Marines so bad and they wouldn't take him. They just wouldn't take them. Uh, they, they didn't want any of that problem, you know. <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> he, and I was still working then. I hadn't graduated. He went in before I did. <laughs> it was really funny. So you went down to Florida to both work and to be with him? Well, I went down to work, but the hospital was, uh, I had to walk, it was, uh, I don't know, it was like three or four miles away from where I was living. I had a, rented a room. Well, I've walked that several times, then I gave that up. Now, mind you, I went to work in a laundry and a registered nurse, you know. I went to work in a laundry because I could walk to the laundry, but walking to, I didn't have a car, you know, in those days. But it was funny, when I went down, I got on the train in, in Maine, and uh, I, I was, I think, I don't know, uh, in, in those days, you know, they, I couldn't afford, of course, I wouldn't even think of getting a, 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 what do you call those things in a car, you know? Sleeper? A sleeper, you know, so I sat all the way down, and it was really funny, because I didn't realize that I was getting all this soot on my face. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you, Jane? No, no. <laughs> and some guy came over to me, and he offered me a drink of water, and I think it, I don't remember if he offered me a hanky or what, but it seems that I had been in this train all the way down to Florida from Ma from New Hampshire, mind you, and I was I was getting soot in my face. That I didn't realize. It. <laughs> How funny! Huh. But anyway, my brother had did get a uh, room for me, and he was at oh, what was the name of that? I don't remember the name of that camp where he was, mm. but it was a Marine camp in Florida. And then um, after uh, when um, I had to, I had to go back to uh, New Hampshire to join, so I went back to New Hampshire and joined and, and reported to Fort Devens on the 3rd of November, 1943. And it, we did have basic training, but of course they didn't have, we didn't have to carry full packs or anything. We'd, they'd take us out walking with an empty pack, but because we knew what we had to do, they didn't have to, they, they taught us uh, regulations and stuff like that, but nothing else. And then... Um, now, was that new? Uh, the, the Women's uh, Nurses Corps, was that, uh, Army's Nurses Corps, was that uh, a, a new unit at that time? Or had no, been I, think, I think they always had the Army Nurses, but um, the, if we were restricted from the, the um, working on, on the uh, battlefields, yeah. we had to have a, a medical, uh, medical, what do you call it? You see what's happening here, I can't remember, I, I can remember, it takes a while to say sure. the word, Matt Corman. Medical corpsmen did everything, but the closest that nurses ever got to the battles was the uh, field hospitals, and uh, they would um, take the, the patients into the field hospitals, and then they would bring them over to the station hospitals, and then if they needed more care, they would go to the general hospitals and eventually be shipped back home. Okay. And um, But I was um, on Warden's Hill, in Yeovil, England, when the uh, D-Day. Well, let's actually back okay. up. Uh, okay. I, I don't want okay. to ruin okay. your train of thought, but okay. uh, how long then were you? Uh, was your basic training at uh, Fort Devens? 
I was on the high seas the 23rd of November, uh, December. So less than... So less, uh, what, uh, seven weeks, yeah. maybe, that's all. And can you talk about your trip across uh, on the high seas, what that was oh, like? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I was sick. I'd never been on the, on the ocean, and this was the Queen Mary, and she rocked. Oh, my, didn't she rock. I was so sick. And somebody told me, you've got to eat. You've got to eat. So I went down. Christmas Eve, I went down to try to eat. Well, they had put these little boards around the tables, you know, to keep the food on the table. And the old Queen Mary go this way, go that way. And the one thing I remember the most about that is the little green peas on the floor. <laughs> they were trying to serve the meals and drop the things. And the Queen Mary would go this way, and the little piece would go that way. It was so funny. I remember that vividly. And of course, you always meet uh, men, soldiers and all, so uh, we did have um, uh, companionship going over, you know, talking to people. And I, um, I met a, uh, an English, I don't know why he was in the United States, but I met an, a pilot from, an, um, a British pilot from the British Air Force. And I was, I did contact him for a while, but of course, well, we had, uh, Queen Mary couldn't go into England, so we had to, sh we had to go into Scotland. Oh. What, do you know why that was? Yeah, they, they, they didn't have a fee or deep enough. Oh, gotcha, okay. Yeah. So, uh, we, I landed in Scotland, and uh, I was raised in New Hampshire where you, where you just didn't have colored people. And um, I never, I'm not biased at all, but uh, it was surprising to me because um, when we, as soon as we landed, I guess, well, you know, I should have taken my orders out and read them, I guess. Uh, we were there just a day or so, and then they, sh they shipped us out to, to England, where I was supposed to go to the three or fifth station hospital. But the first thing I saw, heard when I got on that train, and the trains there, I, as you know, they have com uh, compartments and then a walk. <laughs> and uh, the first thing that I saw was a, a young white girl getting on with this great big tall black man. I'm n no nothing wrong with that, except they they were outside my door. I could hear them smooching. <laughs> Talk about surprise! <laughs> nothing. I I'm not biased yeah, at all, but yeah. it was it was a shock. It's because no experience to you. Yeah, because yeah. I was. You know, we, we didn't even, I think we had one colored guy in the whole high school, we, we, you know, they, they weren't there, yeah. so it was yeah. funny. But that was, but that was really funny, and I, I'll never forget that one either, but it's, it's nothing, you know. Yeah. And uh, then I, I was, went down to the 305th Station Hospital, and, and that was in Yeovil, England. And we lived in tents, and we had a, a little stove, and the... The guys used to bring the wood for us. We had to burn our own wood. And what else? Um, we weren't supposed to fraternize with the enlisted men, of course, but most of us were just, you know, regular people. And so I'm afraid we fraternized. <laughs> <laughs> but there was, uh, uh, you know, there were always, um, uh, they didn't call them bars. They called them, uh, what the heck they call them. Well, anyway. There were always places we could go, you know, so. And that, that, so that's what you would do for your entertainment uh, on your t well, off duty or what? Yeah, only about? off duty, yeah, if you <laughs> wanted to go out, yeah, you kind of had to because nobody had their own car. You couldn't yeah. just drive into town. Yeah. Yeovil was uh, like 20 um, miles from the uh, British, the channel, wow. the British channel. So we were right close. In fact, uh, when D-Day did come around, uh, we got the first casualties. Oh, wow. 305th yeah. Station Hospital. Did you, uh, prior to that, did you ever come under uh, uh, German bombardment or anything, uh, anywhere in that regard? We used to hear, now, I, I forgot about that, we used to hear these um, go, things going over, what did they call it? See that? You, you know those. Oh, the bombs that. Uh, uh, those, the, uh, what did they call those? The Germans first came up with these things that, yeah. that flew and bombed. Were, what did they the call Pilotless. Uh, Yeah, and everyone I've ever talked to, talk, the thing they remembered was the sound. Yeah, you could hear them. Yeah. Yeah, you could hear them go over. Yeah, and when they were bombing London, we could hear them go over. Yeah. Um, what else? 
Oh, there were different things, you know, that I could tell, like uh, the nurses would be invited to officers clubs a lot to go dancing. and So um, there was one time when uh, we all went somewhere, I think it was an Air Force club or something. And, and I can remember, we drove down in an ambulance, mind you. Sometimes we went in these trucks. We had to climb up in the, the truck. Uh, uh, I can't remember the number. Oh, but anyway, I remember one time we went down in an ambulance. They took a group of us down in an ambulance. And when we got ready to uh, leave, we waited and waited and waited for somebody. And finally, she showed up and we took off. And lo and behold, something happened, and I don't know what to this day they haven't told us. But we had to, we were all, um, uh, all, all of us that had been there were witnesses. We, we were called to a court martial, mind you. And I don't even know what for. <laughs> but it was a colored guy sitting there. So I think, but I don't know what happened. They said they couldn't tell us till afterwards, and I, I never, you know, I never found out afterwards. But I think what happened was he must have uh, accosted her or something, um, because he, w he, there was, he was the prisoner for sure. And all they did was ask us a few questions, and like how long did I have to wait, and stuff like that, because I didn't see anything. Yeah. So that's, I couldn't be much of a witness. But anyway, that was surprising. And uh, now what? Uh, can you, uh, did you ever get, were you able to get into uh, town and, and mingle with uh, with the English? Did you go no, to London? No, we, we couldn't get into town much. Yeah. Um, we, I, I don't know, if you'd have to hitch a ride with soldiers and all. Um, I, there, we, there was a, was not a bar, what do they call? Well, officers clubs? No. Uh, uh, um, a pub? A pub, oh. an English pub that we could walk to, oh, okay. and then we used to go down there. And, but we never went into town to mingle too much with people, as I remember. But I did while I was there. Of course, I did travel to London and did that. I went to Madame Trousseau's, you know, and different places like that. How, we did, how, was, how was that like for a, a, a small country girl from New Hampshire that probably hadn't traveled much, uh, yeah. seen much in her life up to yeah. that point? Mm. It was uh, it was very interesting, you know, and. We saw the changing of the guard at the pal at the, the where the king lived there. Uh -huh, queen and all that. Yeah. Was there uh, a lot of damage in London? Oh yeah, um, yeah, there was. But boy, when I went to France, whoa, we went into La Havre. Oh, if you could have seen that, oh my. Well, I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I, that's I, I, I'll keep we'll keep going on the story. Yeah, yeah, okay. I've, I've been asked to ask yeah. you about. I don't know if it was the trip over, the trip back, or or crossing the channel. Uh, to tell the story about uh, the time you know, were almost blown off the ship. Oh, that was coming home. <laughs> okay, well, we'll, okay, good. Then we'll get then we'll get that on the way back then. That was so, coming home. <laughs> okay, so you're at this field hospital uh, near the English I Channel. I was at the 305th when, Station Hospital. Station. And when uh, when D-Day happened. When D-Day happened. Tell your story. I was uh, like I said, we were living in tents, and I don't know whether I had been to work or what, but I heard these planes going over, and I saw these, and I kept looking at them. Holy mackerel, look at that. Can you describe the scene? The, the, the scene that were just great big old planes going in droves, and I thought it was a training. I said, boy, that's some training session. Uh, no, I could, there were just these great big bombers going over, but I thought it was a training session. I didn't know anything I've about it. I've heard it described that there were so many that it almost blackened the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it wasn't that bad, but I, I could see them in droves going over. Uh, and and um, I didn't realize what it was until we started getting the patients. And boy, we got some of the very first ones. They didn't. They didn't prepare you to oh, be no, prepared no, no, for no, that. No, that, no, uh, no. We knew nothing about it. Uh, -uh, uh, uh, no, no. All I know was that we started getting these patients in, and most of them, oh, quite a few of them, were just in for submersion. They were in the water, you know. And it wasn't any time, hardly any time at all, that. Uh, well, we kept getting them in, but we would transfer them immediately to the other hospitals. And then guess what? They made us a prisoner of war hospital. Really? Yes. So we, we, became, we, we became a prisoner of war hospital. What was the, that like? I mean, uh, was... Well, we didn't, uh, we didn't have to take care of the patients at all. 
the uh, Corman did all the work. So we were really administrators, it's about what oh, okay. we did. Uh -huh. But it was okay, but what one memorable night, I'll never forget, it was Christmas Eve, and these patients were, were in humongous big uh, tents, big tents. There was well, maybe 40 in the tent, you know, good big tents. And on Christmas Eve, I heard him sing in Silent Night in German. You couldn't help but feel bad, you know. Yeah. I mean, a lot of those guys didn't want to be fighting. Yeah. But um, then, too, uh, there was one thing that I felt kind of bad about, and that was when uh, there was some young kid, and they were getting young, you know, some of these patients now. They were just kids. And in those days, you had a patient with a broken leg in traction. You didn't put them in a cast right away. They put them in traction. And they brought this kid back got him in the bed, and his alignment had gotten out. And that doctor, our doctor, manipulated that thing, and I felt, oh, he was trying to get it back where it should be, and oh, I felt so bad for that. He was just a young boy, you know. Yeah. I felt so bad over that. And uh, I, I, the offices were in a special ward, so you didn't go in there much. I did go in once, but I don't remember what for and saw this guy that was probably one of the real bad officers in the German army. You know. But other than that, you know, they, they uh, had a big fence all around it. And they, they didn't, they took care of us and made sure that nothing happened to us. And, and I think uh, that when I went to France, I think that the, the prisoners were still there. But after the um, uh, Germans gave up, old patriotic Irene, you know, decided that she had to sign up for uh, the CBI, China, Burma, India. Oh yeah, I f oh yeah. <laughs> I well, felt like they needed p people, see. Well, I always, I'm sorry to keep uh, slowing you down, but I, I yeah, okay. uh, before we head over to there, but uh, so from, uh, from the field hospital in England, uh, you crossed over to, to France. Uh, that was when I decided, after I signed up for the CBI. Oh, oh okay, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, to get, got it. yeah because the, the Germans had given up. The war, war in Europe was over? Or yeah, given the up war to... in Europe, had, he, they, they had given up, but the Japs hadn't given up. But so the, this whole time uh, until uh, May of 45, you, re, you remained in England? No, I went to France. Okay, all right. What happened is, the Germans gave up. And they needed uh, uh, people to volunteer for, for CBI, and I volunteered. And so now they take me to France. Okay, all right. And I was going to go to the CBI from France. Okay. And so um, I'll never forget going in La Havre. Boy, was that place bombed. It was really something. And then uh, we took us, they took us down. Um, I went to the 100th General Hospital to wait for an assignment. And then also... Um, they, then I was able to, to uh, really um, do a lot of visiting there. I remember we were in box cars. <laughs> you know, they, 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 these cars were uh, uh, eight and twenties. They called eight, uh, uh, eight and twenty, uh, eight and twenty, twenty and eights or some. You could take uh, eight horses or a forty and eights or forty men. They were that's what they were called. Uh. Uh, 40, I think they were called 40 and 8. You know, my memory isn't as good as it used to be. Yeah. But you could take like 40 men in this car, or 8 horses. They called them 40 and 8s. And we were in the 40 and 8s going down there. And every time... Just simple, the, just simple box cars? Yeah. Huh. But they had, the doors were open. Yeah. And when we stopped, uh, all the French people would come up trying to sell us cheese. And, oh, is that good cheese? You know, they would. They'd try to sell us cheese. But anyway, I ended up at the 100th General Hospital, and I was able to do a lot of um, sightseeing then. I went to Reims Cathedral, and, and I went down to, um, uh, well, I, I, went, I went south to, <clears throat> where did they scuttle their ships? Uh, Marseille? No, 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 no. I went to Marseille, but uh, they scuttled the ships. Uh, when, the, when the French, the Germans took over, uh -huh. they scuttled their navy. Oh, I had that name. Oh, what the heck was that name? That starts with a T. Oh. 
Anyway, um... What was that site like? Well, they were all scuttled. You couldn't yeah. see them. They had sunk all their navy yeah. down there. What is scuttled? Uh, they sunk their oh. navy, ships. So that the Germans... So the Germans wouldn't get them. When the Germans took over, they, they yeah. scuttled them all. But I did go down. I did a lot of traveling then. I went to Reims Cathedral, like I said, and we went down to... Uh, um, we were down in Marseille, and we, we went on leave from there, too. We, we could... Oh, I forgot that. I, we used to go... I, I, when you asked me about entertainment, yeah. we went to uh, Switzerland a couple of times. Really? Yeah. I forgot to tell you that. Yeah, and they were planned trips, you know. Uh -huh. Uh, they 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 ushered you all the way through. So I forgot to tell you about that. But then when I when I got down to the southern part of France, um, I did go out to Chateau d'If. You know the story about the Count um, of was it the Count of Monte Cristo? Tell tell the story if you will, uh, as, um, as you know it. Uh, and uh, well, I I wasn't. There's a story about wasn't it was it the Count of Monte Cristo that was stuck in Chateau d'If? Well, anyway, it's it's uh, what it is is uh, right off the coast of France, the southern part of France. There's a, a rock pile, and there's a Chateau d'If there. You heard, you've heard of Chateau d'If, haven't yeah, you? Uh -huh. Yeah. And and we went in there, and we went down and saw everything where he was supposed to have gotten out and everything. <laughs> Terrible. I would never have been in a place like that. Uh, what else did I do in France? Um, and. I did a lot of. Um, Were you able to ever get up north to, to Paris? And oh, I, yeah, I was in Paris. We yeah. went through Paris when we went to the general. See, I don't remember all this. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. I went. I went into Paris. Yeah, yeah. We went up in the, into the, um, oh, you know, the big tower. Eiffel. The Eiffel Tower. Yes, yeah. they got it all covered with lights now. And uh, another thing that I remember a lot is. Um, we went into these big, uh, they, they let us wander around, and we went into these big department stores and, and you could see where people had pillaged everything, you know, they, they, they would, most everything was gone, but you could pick up things here and there that they'd left behind, so it was really awful. But anyway, um, after, when the Japs finally gave up, then I knew that I was going to go home. But I had had all my shots and everything to go to the CBI. Um, I, I'm glad I didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> but I was yeah. going. I mean, but I had all my shots. And boy, I, I don't know now if you want me to go home now or not. Well, I'll just ask, ask a few questions uh, okay. while, you, while you're still over there. Uh, okay. For example, do you remember where you were uh, uh, VE Day when uh, the Germans surrendered? Well, I was still in England. I was still in England then. Uh, that's when I, uh, you know, I haven't even thought about all this for a long time. But I was in England. That's uh -huh. before I, I volunteered to go to the CBI. Uh -huh. And I'm trying to think. Well, it was one celebration, I can yeah. tell you that. Okay. I was. I can't remember where I was, but well, I was still in in the oh, tents. Yeah. We were living in the tents on, on Warden's Hill in Yeovil. I'd like to go back there. I want to go back sometime. I bet they've developed it all now. But um, well, what were what were conditions like in the tent? Can, uh, did you? Were you I, there were three of us in the tent. Uh huh. And um, one thing I do remember there, I I had a nice big bottle of perfume that a friend had given me, and one day it didn't smell so strong. Somebody had taken it and put water in it. <laughs> you could tell. It didn't smell that good anymore. Yeah, we, we just had three beds in there. The, 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 the other two nurses were older than I was. I was just barely 18 years old, you know. Huh. And uh, uh, we, we, uh, we had a little dog. I forgot to tell you about a little Karen Terrier that we had adopted. And the poor little thing got sick. And, of course, we had no way to get into town and certainly couldn't afford a vet. So one of the soldiers took him out, and I guess he shot him. Oh, wow. And that's kind of sad. But that's what they did. But uh, condition in the camp, uh, I mean, you you warm enough, you had proper clothing. Oh, yeah. Food was... Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We always had plenty of food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, we did. Yeah. And, um, of course, um, I wasn't vegetarian in those days, so there was always plenty of food. 
but at, at um, Christmas time. And how is that like being away from home on the holidays? Uh, an oh, eighteen-year-old. It uh, just feels sad, you yeah. know. But they tried every every way to make it easier for you, you know. And, and like I said, we were friends with a lot of people, and and the officers would invite us into their club a lot. So there was a lot of uh, things to do. <laughs> In fact, some of the nurses did a little more than they were supposed to. <laughs> you hear stories. <laughs> Shouldn't say that, should I? Yeah, that's your your tape. <laughs> We're trying to get her all down. So. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> and how, uh, we used to have fun, but um, like I said, you know, there are different kinds of people. <laughs> how was it uh, treating the soldiers? Uh, did you hear stories coming back uh, from what they had experienced? And oh yeah, but uh, like I said, the corpsmen did most of the work uh -huh. for the men, and. Um, I, I never, we were more administrators, okay. yeah, the, um, the men did most of the work, they would yeah. pass the meds and all that, but they did most of the work. Yeah. But you know one thing that I, that I remember now, I should have gone through my orders, I might remember, penicillin had just come out, and what we used to do is, we had a, um, a vial of penicillin, and how we gave the shots, we had about five or six different syringes, and we would pull the <laughs> penicillin out on into the syringes and go around, and that's how we gave <laughs> the penicillin. Imagine you had a tray with two or three or four or five, six uh, uh, syringes, and we'd go around and give everybody a shot. Huh. Oh, <laughs> sometimes we just change the needle. And that was when they first came out. We would just change a needle and give them a shot of penicillin. Can you imagine that? Huh. I'd forgotten about that. I was trying to remember things, but now that I'm talking to you, I remember things I haven't remembered for a long time. I think it wasn't the syringes. It was uh, that we filled the big syringe and went around and changed the needle. Huh. And we used to have to do our own needles, of course. You know, they weren't disposable in those days. You had to uh, clean them out, and you, you had to put a little... Uh, a little wire in in the needle to keep it clear when they when they uh, sterilized them. Huh. And what else can I remember? What what the, was the, it, what was it like uh, communicating back and forth to like home to your folks, uh, or did you hear a word about how your brother was doing? Uh, well, uh, well, I used to get letters, but uh, they had to be very careful what they said. Yeah, you know, he was in the uh, the Marine Air Force, mind you. And he was a gunner to begin with. He was in one of these kids in the back of the, the Marine Corps, the the plane with the the, the hood over him, you know. Right. Yeah. And then he, I think he then went to became a part of a navigator or something. But he was a gunner's mate when he went in there. Just a young kid. But were you getting word in England? On Once how in he... a while, not much from my brother. But I used to hear from my parents all the time. Uh huh. Yeah, they used to write to me all the time. So. And that was uh, pretty reliable back and forth. Oh yeah, yeah. U.S. Post Office. It's a, what is it? U.S.P. Uh, United States Post or something was. The uh, uh, APO. Uh -huh. APO it was, and and that that was the um, address you had to put down, and then they would distribute the mail. My goodness, I haven't thought about all this in so long. Yeah, I should have taken my orders out and read them. But anyway. So now you're sitting in in France. Uh, the war is yeah. over in Europe, and you're preparing for uh, to go to uh, to China. CBI. Mm -hmm. uh, you said you had to go through a series of shots and, and get. Oh yeah, I got yellow fever and everything to go. I had did, everything. Did you have any idea what you were going to? What what the no, area? No, no. We you just, just simply had, just volunteered. Yeah, right? and they Why? they just get you together and take you where they want. Where you wanted, but where they wanted, but. Do you remember where you were when uh, VJ Day? Uh, um, I was uh, associated with the Hundredth General Hospital. I know that. Uh -huh. But uh, we weren't even working on the wards. They just had us billeted there. That's what they call it in England, you know, billeted. And uh, I don't remember where the heck was I when VJ Day came along. It was a shocker, you know, when we heard about those nuclear 
bombs. Did you have any idea what, uh, when you first heard about it, could you even fathom what, uh, what mm -mm. they were? Mm -mm. Yeah. No, it's quite a shock, I tell you. But immediately after that, of course, Japan gave up. Yeah. And we knew immediately then they told us that we'd be going back home. We did have the option of staying in the service, and I wish I had stayed in now. I honestly do. Huh. It would have been a good idea for me to stay in for a while. For what reason, do you think? Well, to get back into, I don't know, I just I haven't been over there two years. I thought it would be a good idea. I think now I should have stayed in for a while, but I didn't. And uh, what is it? Um, when I came back, they were still doing 12-hour duty at work. And the, um, the uh, uh, what do you call those? Not nurses aides, but uh, uh, LPNs uh -huh. were taking charge of the wards because they didn't have enough nurses, you know. Uh -huh. And so when we came back, then the nurses, the RNs, had to take over again. Well, how much how much longer were you over in Europe uh, after the war ended before you finally shipped home? Uh, the Japs. It was uh, the Japs gave up. When did they give up? August of forty five. August of 45, and I didn't come home until December of 45, that's what it was, and I, I'll never forget that either. When I ended up at home, it was on Christmas Eve in 1945, and I was so happy, I was jumping up and down, I jumped on my mother's feet, she said, Irene, she's French, ah. my toes. <laughs> I was jumping up and down. I was so glad. One of my brothers had come down to meet me in Boston, and uh, that's where but, you came. Uh, yeah, embarked at. But get, getting back to when I left um, France, uh, we went on a mer merchant ship this time, and it was the George Washington. But I didn't get sick because it pitched, <laughs> so I didn't get sick. But. Um, uh, we had a real bad storm. That's what they're talking about, you know. And uh, the, the winds were, uh, the, it was almost a hurricane, but not quite. And I can remember seeing those, um, uh, the, 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 the ship would go down and you could see the water, wall of water all the way up. You know, it was a bad storm. In fact, I even had, I think I had some newspaper articles on that one. It was real bad. Well, we were allowed to run a, we were allowed to walk around, you know. We weren't told not to go anywhere. And that's when I went up to the, uh, I can't even, I don't know the terminology, but I went up some to the uh, bridge maybe. I don't know. But I wanted to go up to see what was going on when I get up there. And that wind was so strong that I, I started to go down. And I was the only one up there. when. All of a sudden, the ship went over a little bit, and the wind took me, and I had hold of one hand. No kidding. If I had let go, I would have gone through an opening, and I'd have been in that water. You scared the living daylights out of me. And I hung on and hung on until the ship righted itself, and I, I went down in this, in my, my uh, uh, whatever it is, um, what do you call it? State, uh, General quarters? No, the room. State, State room. Yeah, whatever. And there were about four or five of us in there. I never came out again. I'm scared of the. No, honestly, I was just hanging on with one hand, and the ship was had. I think the wind had been blowing so hard it uh, the ship twist uh, the pushed it sideways, you know. And there was an opening there in in the in the um, railing. If I had let go, I'd have been in that water. And nobody would have known that you. Nobody would have missed me. Yeah. In fact, the storm was so bad, we got absolute conditional absolution there from the priest. Wow. It was such a bad storm that he got us all together and gave us conditional absolution that we had to go to confession as soon as we got on, as soon as we got home. It was that bad. It was a bad storm. And, and I think I've even got some paper. I'll have to dig through all that. I have some paper on, on that, I think. It was a... A memorable, very memorable storm. And then, um, when I landed, I went back. I don't remember if it was Fort Devons still. It must have been Fort Devons. And we w did work in the hospital there for a few days until we were discharged. And when I went home, 
uh, I was my terminal leave was was in May of 1946. Oh, but you were able to when you got into Boston, you were able to go home for a few days for Christmas before you reported back to Port Devon. No, uh, when I went home uh, December, that was it. I I was but but I had terminal leave. You see, you 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 accrue leave, uh -huh. so I really was still in the service until the 6th of May in 1946. Okay. And I went to work, and of course I didn't have too many uniforms, and I had a lot of mit I remember that I, <laughs> I went to work, um, I ended up in Maine, because a cousin of mine was working in Bar Harbor, Maine. And when she found out I was home, she called and wanted me to come up to Maine to work. And that's how I ended up in Maine. But I didn't have too much uh, civilian clothes, I had a lot of, of army clothes, and I was still wearing my olive drab uh, uh, shirt and and uh, skirt. And the, the director of nurses said something to me about it. You're not in the service. Well, I am. I'm not out until the 6th of May. 1946 is when I was out. But I had uh, almost well, five months of uh, terminal leave. Um, it was just a crude leave, you know, because yeah, you, you, yeah. you get so much, but where are you going to go to use it up? And that's how I ended up there, and I met my husband up there, and he had just gotten out of service. He was, uh, he was in the, the South Pacific, and, uh, and of course, we, I met him in, in May, and then we got married in November. Anything else you'd like to know? And, and you continued on. Did you continue on with your nursing career through? Uh... Oh, yeah. Well, I stayed at, that, at the Bar Harbor Hospital. And uh, we were still doing 12-hour duty there, for goodness sakes. Uh, but after a while, they did shorten it to eight, eight hours. Because yeah. I remember how I met my husband. They had asked me. I was working days on maternity. I was always um, uh, specialized. I didn't like bedside nursing. So I always did maternity or something different. And I was uh, working 12 hours on a maternity ward. and. Um, one of the nurses was sick, and I remember that I was off that night, and they called and wanted to know if I could come in. And I had a date that night, but I had to go to work. And uh, I, I went in because the girl couldn't come in, so I was working from 7 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning. My date met somebody else <laughs> and got married. But when I got off now, um, I remember when, when I uh, finally got off the night duty, uh, we were uh, going out, a friend of mine uh, had a date, and she wanted me to go along with her. And, but they saw my husband going by, your dad, Jane. Uh -huh. And he said, hey, Red, do you want a date with a nurse? <laughs> so he came, and the four of us went out on the date. That poor guy sat there, never said a word all night, hardly. <laughs> he was bashful. And, and that developed, you know, and that we were, then we started dating and we got married in November. Huh. He was, uh, he was with the, um, he, he'd been activated, um, uh, National Guard, and he'd been activated, he and another guy had been activated in, um, I think, uh, April or March or April or something early, and two of them got their diplomas because they had to go. He got his diploma early, they graduated him early. And um, uh, he was down, he was with the Signal Corps down in the South Pacific. But yeah. anyway. And, and you, uh, both your brothers made it back okay from the war? And um, my brother that was in the Second World War came back. The other one was seven years younger than I, and he went in the Korean War. Oh, okay. So he wasn't in the, oh, in the, okay. the uh, he was in the Korean War. But uh, yeah, my brother came back in good shape. Oh, good. Yeah, they're all dead now. But yeah. And he used to hit the deck when a car backfired. Oh boy, he was my brother that was in the Marines. He was in one of, a city somewhere with his wife, and he heard a car back, backfire, and he's out of that car and hits the ground. Yeah. It's just a right. A, yeah, it was just a Combination. reaction. Yeah. It's just a yeah. reaction. Yeah. yeah, he did that. Our Maggi was scared to death. He jumped out of that car and hit the deck, <laughs> right in the middle of town. Yeah. <laughs> that was just a, yeah. You know, it, it's really, really, it's not always easy to get back into 
civilian life. I mean, yeah, how, how was how was a, the adjustment for you going from military life to, to well, it wasn't life. that was bad because yeah. I mean, we just nursed. You yeah. see, it was different. I mean, you take these young guys, you teach them to go out and kill people. Gee, over a third of the veterans uh, of uh, homeless people are veterans. Yeah. In fact, um, I found a, a paper here which was kind of surprising. I'd forgotten I had it. It tells you how to get back into civilian life. They gave, they gave yeah, that to you, uh, yeah, how, how to get back into civilian life. Yeah. And um, oh, and I do belong to that um, woman's memorial. You've heard of that woman's memorial yeah, in Washington, D.C. Yeah, yeah um, well, I worked for the Forest Service. I, I have a nurse since 1986 because I turned 65, and my line of work, I, I was an IV nurse and had to carry a big basket. And I figured there was a time for the younger nurses to do that. But um, um, I was working for the Forest Service here uh, under a program. Uh, it's called um, uh, CSEP, Senior Employment um, something program. Uh, senior um, Employment... Or whatever. Anyway, uh, it was a program funded by the by the Labor Department, and uh, what was I get? You're talking about the the Women's Memorial. Oh yeah, they used to send us off on training programs, and I went to Washington D.C. on a training program, and I I found this. Uh, I went back to where this this uh, they were just building it then, you know, and. Um, I got an application, and so I do. I'm certified a certified member of the Women's Memorial in Washington D.C. And um, I went to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. You've ever been there? Yeah. Oh wow! Oh wow! Wasn't that something? Yeah. Oh God! I have a wonderful, wonderful story about that. Uh, and I didn't bring it, of course, but I have. Um, a story about a big hurricane that was heading, and it was only a few years ago, that was heading for Washington, D.C., and all your senators and everybody took two days off. But guess what? Yeah. Those boys refused. They refused. And this is a marvelous story. I have it somewhere. Have you read it? I've heard of it, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a marvelous story. And they would not right. leave the tomb of the unknown soldier. I get you goosebumps. They're they would not leave. They kept right on marching. Yeah. And and what they have to do, those kids, I've got a list of that too, you know. They, they have to promise to do this for so many years, and they 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 have so many rules that, that they have to follow to do this. This is really quite a position. Yeah. It's not everybody that can do it. Yeah. But, the, oh, was I impressed. Are they guarded? Oh, yeah. Guard the, oh, yeah. Guard the tomb. Yeah, yeah they guard the tomb of the unknown. So I'll give you that, the copies of that. I've got a beautiful copy of that. Yeah. They, they, they're, their tomb is right <sighs> there, and they, they have two men on guard all the time. And they walk back and forth. In precision. Yeah, amazing. they are ex. Oh, I'd love to go back there. Oh, I tell you, that was so impressive. I loved it. And you'd said yeah. earlier you had never uh, uh, been back to Europe since then to go to see No, yeah. I want to go, but yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I just put things off. I'm sure. a procrastinator. <laughs> I'd love to go back. Yeah. I think about it all the time, but I, I just don't. Do you, do you keep in touch with any of the, the nurses or any of the personnel that you had? Not uh, anymore. Served? No. 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 No, they were from Florida and all over the place. There was one girl that was quite a friend, but I lost track of her. But, yeah. but anyway. Well, how do you think the, uh, your experience, your war experience during those years, how do you think it affected your life or changed your life? Did, did it play into your, how it played into your, into your life at all? Oh, only my feeling for the servicemen uh, and service people, you know. Um, I'm uh, very, very patriotic and I do belong to the VFW, a life member and also a life member in the, in the American Legion. And I have a great deal of respect for servicemen. And I probably shouldn't say this, but I sure feel sorry for them in Iraq. God, yeah. oh, that's a mess. I feel so bad. I hope that mess will be cleared up soon. Yeah. 
I've always been very, very patriotic. Uh, prior, do you think you were uh, patriotic prior to the war? Or do you think that both. developed? Both, yeah. I've always been very. Well, I was. I went to Catholic school, and I'm telling you, boy, we did our prayers and we did our saluting the flag and everything else. There, they, they there was no fooling around with with <laughs> um, the pledge of allegiance and all that. Every single day, boy. I think patriotism, as I said before, is a lot more prevalent in those days than it is now. Anyway, what else would you like well, to Well, I guess as we wind down this interview, is there anything I didn't ask you or anything that you can remember that you want to add to the tape before we... Uh, we I'd like you to show some memorabilia. Yeah, we'll, what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll oh, videotape okay. a lot of the memorabilia once the interview's over as well. Okay. So. Well, yeah. I got, yeah, I've got all this stuff. Okay. Um, uh, I, I really regret that I didn't stay in, but that's beside the point now. I should have stayed Longer before. or made a, a career I out of the military? Well, possibly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I really think that it would have been good to stay in for a while. Yeah. This is a friend of mine in the Korean War, this man, a retired rear admiral. Uh, he was served in Korea for four years, and when he, he was in the Naval Air Force. And when he wanted to get out, they talked him into staying in the reserves. And th therefore, he stayed in the reserves right up until the end, until he couldn't go any further, and then he got out. So whether or not I would have stayed in the reserves, I don't know. But um, I, I think it would have been a good idea to stay in for a while. Amanda, I really Amanda said you have one time said something about the men coming down from the men that got hurt that you treated, the stories that they told you when the beaches of Normandy and the paratroopers. The, what they saw out there on that day, you would hear back when they were injured. They were telling you what they saw that day. I can't remember what they said, but well, because I, if they, you know, said how horrible it was and everything, stuff like that. But um, the most of what we got back right away were the guys that were um, submerged in the waters. So they were in for submersion. Yeah. It was pretty horrible. I remember them telling me how horrible it was, but... Okay. Well, well, do you have any closing comments you'd like to make uh, in regards to before we shut her down? I think I made them with my... Okay. ...my uh, deep feelings for those guys in Iraq. Yeah. 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 Shouldn't have happened. Yeah. It really shouldn't. I don't know how that guy gets sleep. Yeah. Oh. Well. A memorabilia, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to thank you for uh, participating in this program today. And more importantly, I want to uh, thank you for your service to our country. Thank you. Those are the uniforms we wore. They don't wear those anymore. Th those were the IDs we had to carry with us, identifications they carried with us. We always had to have them with us. That's about it. This mine? That's all mine. That's all the rest of the stuff I had. Here's this. This is a scarf made from a parachute that went down on D-Day. And that emblem is the 101st Airborne. Screen right Eagles. Yeah, the 101st Airborne. And then I have other, these things. This one here, I think, might have been when they, <laughs> this is parachute stuff that they had when they, um, I think this might have been what the um, uh, armor, uh, the guns and all, I, uh -huh. I think. And then they had this blue, which might have been food or something. These are all bits of parachutes that went down on D-Day. And how did you come uh, in possession of these? Did Do I have to tell you all that? No. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> oh, they gave them to us. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they gave no, them to us. No, I gave it to you. What? That scarf. No, yeah, we're not talking about the scarf. And this here is what the, the soldiers had to wear on their helmets. And they, they could put uh, stuff on them. No, th when, um, when we were 
uh, the, the soldiers would give us all this. I mean, they were given to us uh, as uh -huh. souvenirs. Yeah. There's no uh -huh. reason why we couldn't have this. Sure, yeah. And then we didn't take them out. Right, right. I had a lot more stuff, but I'd given it away. Yeah. Did I give you some, Jane? Uh-huh. Why don't you bring that out then? And can you talk a little bit about the medallion you're wearing? This is the uh, emblem for the VFW. Oh, okay. Veterans of Foreign Wars. Uh, it's their logo. I mean, uh, and so is the hat. Well, we had to wear them all the time. That, that was a, a, a and and the reason there's a notch in here is because if you got killed, you were supposed to open the guy's mouth and put this in there. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Now you've heard something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what that notch is for. Because in the field, if they would, if they died, they would take their their um, uh, dog tags and. Huh. Part, and that was the only way they could identify them. Yeah. yeah. Well, not the only way, but that's what, exactly what that was for. That's what we were told. Huh. Yeah. And then this is just a thank you, for President Truman. For your service? Yeah. Yeah. It says here, to you who answered the call of your country and served in its armed forces to bring about the total defeat of the enemy, I extend the heartfelt thanks of a grateful nation. As one of the nation's finest, you undertook the most severe task one can be called upon to perform, because you demonstrated the fortitude, resourcefulness, and calm judgment necessary to ca carry out that task. We now look to you for leadership and example in further exalting our country in peace. Harry S. Truman. Hmm. Tell you where I got that. It looks, uh, was that German? Yes. Is it, uh... Mom, it was how many years ago? Why can't you say? You can't say now. An armband? You're not getting in trouble for anything. We had a prison of war okay, hospital. Mm -hmm. That that was just, I think these guys might have, I don't know what that means. That maybe he was a corpsman or something. You're not but see, come back the I gave her pieces of, oh, I forgot to bring all the money I bought. I didn't know if you wanted that or not. There's pictures of me in, in the service. That That's one... You don't want that, do you? I'll, I'll get it here in a second. Yeah. Oh, and this is what the corpsman had to wear. To, so that they, they, they wouldn't be shot at. They had to wear that on their arm. Okay. And these are just pieces of, uh, of the... I gave her pieces of the uh, parachutes that uh -huh. went down. Th this was a German armband, and I'm... Wondering if they, if this wasn't their um, uh, common, I don't know what it means. I don't understand this word. What that word is, I don't know. But these are yeah. okay. And these now are all different emblems. Um, you know, mm -hmm. this is your hundred and first again. And you know, I've got, I've got these. Uh, I can't tell you all. This was a pressure. I can't. I think this was the first time, but anyway, <laughs> look at. Oh, it's when she went to Switzerland. And this was a tourniquet. This is what all the soldiers had to carry. It's a tourniquet in case you find somebody uh, uh, wounded. Uh huh. Uh, huh. All the soldiers had to carry these. Yeah, it was just a, we were on leave in Switzerland, and this was a young a paratrooper that we. There were two of us, and we'd met a couple of guys. And, just had pictures taken with him. Uh, this was uh, in the summer of 1946. We, we were in Bar Harbor, Maine, and this was my boyfriend, and I married him. 